I was going to do this demo on uh, gas, but you know what? Let's enjoy the color. Um, so this is brazing. Um, you can basically do this with any soft metal. Um, you could lead solder it, you could silver solder it, you could copper braze it. I suppose it's brazing if it's copper. Uh, brass braze it, bronze braze it. They all have some attributes or other. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of like just grabbing the thing, sling it in the fire, having assembled all the pieces, throw some brass chips on it and hope for the gods to be favorable upon you. I like to make things happen more plausibly than that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin it, so prep the surface and I'm just going to lay that on there and allow it to uh, gain a little heat and of course the side that I want is not the side that it's turning to and what I did with these is I just prepped the surface I ground them a little bit um, this is kind of the, to emulate a key that kind of thing so I put a little bit of a flat on that one and a little bit of a flat on this one and I could just do one piece but I'm going to actually do both if I can figure out that I have time down that will work. I'm going to nestle this one down in the fire. Slowly bring them up. Um, so, brown, uh, bronze, braised, melts at about, I'm going to say it's like 1600 ish. Uh, so, like a low orange. Um, so if I allow this to come in just a wee bit longer, I'm going to flux the surface, which I've already put away. I forgot I was supposed to be doing the brazing video, so I'll put that in up. The bright steel will take the braze easier than the um, scaly steel. Of, uh, the hot oxide. So part of the benefit of this is bringing up the temperature so that it will cause the flux to adhere but without getting it so warm that it's starting to oxidize. And you're using brass rod. Yeah, uh, this. This is, actually I think it's actually brazing rod rather than just brass rod. Alloy differences. Um, yeah, this is just industrial brazing rod. And you can warm this just a touch to uh, get it to pick. Um, so you see that one there has come up to temperature quite nicely. Because of the environment that it's been in, it's actually um, fairly well protected. There we go. Oh, there it goes. I don't know. It's maybe it's hard to see in this video, but he's essentially melting the. Raising rod directly onto that little piece. And I've dipped it in the flux so that I basically have pre-fluxed rod so that the if you get the temperature just right it will do all the work for you. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Okay, I'm going to drag that one out there. That's good. Okay. So, that, uh, I'll just pop it to the side there. That has got a little bit of that brass applied to the surface, which means that it's 
really. That's not what I wanted you to do. Um, it means that it should accept the braise of the joint easier. Now this one, basically going to be the same again. Of course I've got bits of coal trying to jump in the way. It's kind of the, <laughs> the fun of doing it like this. How would I do it normally? Obviously a settle in torch. <laughs> But again, you know, even if I was using an oxyacetylene torch, I'd still do it exactly the same. Um, you know, I'd warm up the surface. Uh, I'd have it surrounded by brick so that it... And you want the material itself to melt the piece. Yeah, so I'd surround it by brick as, for insulation. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the material up to temperature so that the material melts the brazing rod or solder or whatever else I'm using, uh, not the flame itself. There we go. That's lovely. And if I stick it in just a little, uh, a little too deep there, Tiger. Um, so that, you see that flashing? That is not desirable because that's your zinc burning off. Mm. Which is also not awesome for you. So that got a little too hot just then? Yeah, just marginally. A little bit more flux. Let's see if we can get it to scooch up the touch. That surface is now well prepped. Set that side to cool off. Now, could I have done it without doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what do I want to achieve? I want to achieve a successful joint. So by doing this, I increase my plausibility of creating a successful joint. And I do exactly the same this method, method as this when I'm uh, silver soldering bolsters onto a knife. I will tin the knife and I'll tin the bolsters and then I'll assemble them and pin them, I, I'm, again, belt and braces. So I pin them with exactly the same uh, grade of brass as the bolster itself if I'm using brass bolsters. Pin it and then sweat the whole thing up nice and slow and eventually you know and have some little cavities where the solder goes and it dribbles down and boom, done and it's just so much easier you don't get any failure so you know uh, things you learn along the way uh, and when your time is money you get kind of good at figuring out how to make it work the first time every time there we go a little bit more prep um, I'm gonna grab this file These are my hot work files. Uh, I've always got hot work files kicking around the shop. If I just take that and go this way. What I'm trying to do is just expose all the brass, get rid of all those uh, clinkery bits or the excess scale. But you see how well that surface was covered in brass. I've got a little bit of a tip there. That was that one that was uh, hung the rod hung up. The other one I might actually lock up in the vice and make my life easier. Mm -hmm. This is just ridiculous. There we go. Who knew that all these weird little skill sets that I learned over the years would actually be useful to somebody? That's pretty well prepped. It's nice and flat. 
I've got a little bit of steel exposed over here. I'm not too worried about that, uh, but that is a good brass joint. Um, it's gonna make life so easy. Put that one there. I'm gonna surprise myself. And there's my flat on this one. I'll lock that in the vise. So, you know, preparation, preparation, preparation. Got that little excess, those crispies on the edge. That should be good. Awesome. I'm going to pull those off the rest of the way, wire them up, and then hopefully. Beautiful and clean. Mm -hmm. It leached around a fair amount. I could have controlled that a bit more. Uh, you know, we can use uh, um, stop outs to stop that from flowing. Uh, I'm sure a whole bunch of you have watched that show. Uh, remember them always using um, white out. Uh, basically, it's titanium titanium dioxide delivery system um, that's all you're doing is you're getting that titanium dioxide which is uh, a white powder um, standard white pigment in the universe and uh, it doesn't like stuff so put your titanium dioxide in the way and it will stop things from um, fusing I've lost my little piece of wire. There we go. Now, because I have thick material, I want to put my twists on the top side because the thick material will be what I'm predominantly heating, not the thin stuff. So that way I won't burn up my wire in the process. Not that I should get it that hot. If I get it that hot, I'm doing something pretty wrong. Here's me using a hardy hole as a vice. Literally just jammed in there. Improvise for your fabulous YouTube channel. We totally got this going on. That's a good start. alignment and get those really nice and tight. You don't want to tighten them up too much and then the damn things break on you. And cut those ears off so they don't get in the way. Oh, by the way, mm. if you are forge welding and you don't have a welder to stick your ends of your billets together with, yep. bailing wire works great. Yeah, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a little sketchy um, and try not to forge the, bell, the bailing wire in, but once you've got your first initial set on the joint, you can cut the wire off and get it out of the way. Uh, and it works fairly well. I mean in the scheme of things. Um, it's not my favorite go-to, but you can pull it off. It works better than nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> get those nice and tight. So here we get a wonderful bo bonus that there's a little bit of gap here and here, which means that you won't braise your wire to the right. bar. Um, and then down here, we're gonna drop a little bit of flux in there 
I can do wet flux, so I can wet it down, or I can warm this thing up and uh, drop a little flux in there once it's got a little warmer and get that flux to flow. This is probably the method I'm going to do. And hopefully, hopefully, everything will go well. Um, and then there's several different ways to put your um, braze in there. One of my favorite methods is to actually hammer out the brass into like foil and then cut it into like little snippets and then drop the snippets on there. But that works for only really well if you've got a very, very stable environment. If not, you have to kind of dob it in there. Uh, I will definitely though thin it out because if I make this thinner, it's going to absorb the conductive heat of the steel easier and melt faster. Right. So I'm going to get this a little warm, add a little flux, and then add some brass. It's easy, isn't it? And that's exactly what you don't want to happen. Yeah, so what you can't see is that the top piece sort of shifted a little bit on the bottom. There we go. Hopefully that the thing will stay still now. And it's always a finagly little game. Starting to get pretty hot. Oh, yeah, my wire will probably burn out by the time I get there. Uh, this is why um, wood burning stoves are awesome mm. because they, you're, it allows you to get that nice ambient heat in there, nice and slowly, nice and kind of around the whole thing. talking about the capillary action of flux earlier um, mm -hmm. hopefully that will be nice to me and that little bit of downward hill Got a good heat starting to form in there awesome see that flux run mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh. there we go Got a little brass run there mm -hmm. there it went Lovely. Gosh, I wish I had one of those um, high temperature cameras, like a volcano camera, so we could really get in. <laughs> so we could really get in here and see this. I don't know if it's a thing, but should be. It should be. I mean, I feel like I've seen documentaries where they film very hot things up so close. So you see that little bit of fuming that is zinc that's trying to exit. So I just raise it up a touch in the fire, allow it to slowly chill. And again, you saw how slow and gentle this process is. Don't get in there crazy hot, running with a gigantic flaming forge of madness. It's just a soft, soft, gentle pursuit. Look at that. Don't quench it off at this point. Uh, Thomas Boucher, are you proud of me? <laughs> um, so this is kind of a fun one because um, Thomas he came and took some classes with us he, great blacksmith as it is uh, he um, was the editor for our local guild here in Atlanta and uh, he moved up to somewhere north 
<laughs> I can't remember who it was. Uh, but he recently released a book on padlocks and keys and I got my copy of the book. I've still not got around to it, but I now have done my practice braise. Um, seems to be pretty well in there. That one seems to have flowed all, all the way to the end. Can't really tell on this side. It's a little scuzzy and oxidized, but uh, probably didn't have as much flux on this side. But that would be a pretty good um, braised up key. We'll give it a little bit of a wire brush. Should be cool enough at this point. Yeah, that's fine. And again, that flux is just nasty. It gets everywhere. And you can find better fluxes than the borax for doing this. And I'm gonna be foolish and quench it. Oh no! Because I've been so lucky today. Uh, do you want an angrier brush? No, not really. Okay. It might fall apart. <laughs> Throw it all on the ground. <laughs> and there we go, you can actually see the brace the brass seam on the other side as well, which I was really wanting to expose. You can see that. Got a good mm. seam in there. Good seam in there, a whole lot of extra brass there, so I probably overfilled it. Um, but all in all, look at that, all the way to the tip there and all the way to the tip there. It's reckon, a good joint. I reckon that's stuck together. Yeah. That's solid. <laughs> hey, uh, so that's in theory basically what it does. Um, and if you, do this, look, if you do decide to do something like this with a torch, it's exactly the same, except for instead of using the coal fire or the gas forge as your heat source, you're using an oxyacetylene torch or a butane torch surround it with fire brick so you don't set your table on fire but having that nice little cave of fire brick really helps okay so give it a whirl and uh, see what happens it's it's a fun one <laughs>